Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Shaka Beto, Automation and Measurement Engineer for the National Gas Company. Um, this evening, we will be going through a presentation on the core business of NGC, which is gas transmission and distribution. So feel free to ask questions during or after. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, we will proceed with the presentation now. Um, the fundamentals of natural gas transmission and distribution. NGC's main business and how it relates to our suppliers and customers. The history of NGC and the creation and the creation of the gas transmission distribution network, the gas transmission and distribution network's role and network structure management of the network by the National Gas Company. Um, NGC's core business is the purchase, transport, and sale of natural gas to the local downstream natural gas based industries. Our suppliers are mainly international offshore drilling companies like Enron Oil and Gas, British Gas, British Petroleum, Repsol, and BHP Billington. Who are our customers? Our customers are locally um, in the petrochemical, 73%, power generation, 17%, iron ore and reduction facilities, 5%. Nat how natural gas is delivered? Natural gas is transported via an extensive network of approximately 1,000 kilometers of pipeline, both on offshore and onshore with a current maximum installed transportation capacity of 5 billion cubic feet a day. Natural, um, the early history of NGC. NGC was established in 1975 with a total gas sales for the first year being 370,000 standard cubic feet. Um, NGC took over the operation and maintenance of the TNTEC 16-inch pipeline from Pinal to Port of Spain. Um, that was the first pipeline that we had in 1975. In 1977, a 24-inch pipeline was was installed from Beachview in Guaraguari to Picton, which is in Dibi. In 1978, the 24-inch marine pipeline was completed and expanded to the country's transmission capacity increased to 4 million standard cubic feet per day. In the early NGCs in the 1980s, um, NGC commissioned two platforms for gas compression, the Puy Antique platform, 13 miles of pipeline. We also had 13 miles of a 28 pipeline being installed between Picton and Phoenix Park Van Station at Point Litas. 35 miles of a 30 inch cross country pipeline from Beachfield to the Picton Val Station and then from Picton to Phoenix Park in Point Vistas. We had a 30 inch marine line from Cassia offshore in anticipation of increased demands and increased customers in the future. By the 1990s, the company had grown over, 50, over the 15 year period and NGC had accomplished an increase of gas sales from 150 million in the 1970s to 460, 4, 446 million in the 1990s. The number of consumers increased from three large consumers in the 1970s to 10 large consumers at the Point Lisa's industrial estate, as well as 56 light industrial consumers. Um, in, from the 2000s to present, the natural gas sales has crossed 1 billion standard cubic feet per day. In 2005, the Cross Island Pipeline was completed and commissioned to deliver um, gas to Atlantic LNG in point 14. This pipeline is a 56-inch diameter pipeline, which, is, which at the time was the largest pipeline in the Western Hemisphere of the world and now it is probably the second largest pipeline on this side of the world. Um, we also expanded in Beachfield, where our main inlet, our main 
in that um, liquid gathering facility is the facility was upgraded in 2007. We had expansions in the customer base from 19 customers in 1975 in total to 33 large consumers and 113 light industrial small consumers. The offshore to inland light um, pipeline network distribution. As you can see, this is just a box line diagram of how the gas is how the gas is um, mined and transported to on land, as well as where it's transported more recently from BHP to the newly commissioned facility in Tobago. So we have a few. We have um, the list of suppliers that we have. We have all the platforms here and the, the line size and how it ties in to NGC's main, main inlet facility at Abyssinia. GTD's role is they are we are responsible for operating and maintaining the extensive pipeline network created over the past 35 plus years of NGC's existence. Um, our suppliers, which are listed on the left, um, would would generate the gas for us, and then through pipelines, we would pump it to our gathering facilities, such as Abyssinia and the Beachfield facilities. From the gathering facilities, we would go through pipelines again to the valve station at various points along the pipeline on the way up to the main facility, which is Phoenix Park Valve Station. And then from Phoenix Park Valve Station, we would basically go into um, our customers, mainly on the industrial estate. For the suppliers, we have contractual agreements in place to, in, to ensure benefit to ensure that it benefits both NGC and the suppliers as well. The supplier is committed to providing a defined volume of gas daily, as well as NGC is obligated to take the same. When we when anybody is in breach of this contractual agreement, we have a take up a scenario where NGC would either have to pay for gas that they, that we do not take from them and and transport, likely if they do not, if they are not able to give us the amount of gas that we need on a daily basis, they would have to compensate in the same way. The delivery point and pressure. The gas must be sold and delivered at an operating pressure of the buyer's pipeline up to a maximum pressure of 1,000 PSI. The typical pressure that we would be receiving gas at is about 850 PSI. The supplier shall deliver and Buyer shall accept the gas sold at a delivery point called a measuring skid. The measuring skid ideally is the custody transfer point. It's where meters are put down into the gas lines to determine what, how much gas is being transported across the line continuously. Gas quality from the suppliers. The supplier must must generate gas for NGC that is reasonably free from dust, gum, gum forming constituents and other deleterious solid and liquid matter. It must not contain any free water particles in the liquid state. It must not be at a temperature of exceeding 120 degrees Fahrenheit, contain no more than 0 0.005 molecule percent free oxygen, as well as the gas must not be more than 5% by volume carbon dioxide or any other non-hydrocarbon gas. So the gas must be 95% pure hydrocarbon. For the lease, at the gathering facilities, this is the area where all the gas is processed from the offshore facilities when it arrives on land, as well as, as, well as we do liquid connection, check metering of how much gas is sold, pressure monitoring, and we have ESD shutdown setups at these facilities. The transporting pressure for the gas from the gathering facilities towards the network is generally 750 degrees PSI. Critical point at the gathering site, Beachfield Flood Catcher Facility in Guaya, which is the one I spoke about at Abyssinia, is the same facility, receives gas from Truly supplies from a 30 inch line, a 24 inch line, a 36 inch line, and now from BHP Billington, the 36 inch newer line, which also feeds some gas to Tobago. 
Um, the gas is transported out of the bud facility via a 40 a 48-inch line and a 30-inch line. And then these are then broken, broken down into a 24-inch line, a 30-inch line, and a 36-inch line, and transported from our main launcher facility to come up to, to Phoenix Park Gas to Phoenix Park Power Station at Point Lisas. Offshore suppliers on the 30-inch line and how much gas they are scheduled to give us on average on a daily basis. The EOG Pelican is 100 million standard cubic feet. The Cassia A platform is 600 standard cubic feet, but the Cassia is a dual platform A and B, so it's split between both A and B. We are on a daily, we look at getting 600 million from them. Um, the 24-inch line coming from offshore, we, we normally we have EOG or Spring, they give 180 million um, standard cubic feet. And the BG, that is a typo, the BG TT Dolphin platform gives 300 standard cubic feet. Of the 36-inch line coming straight into the bed, we have the EOG oil bid given 100 million, and then the Cassia platform 600 million. The new 36 inch pipeline gives 200 million from, from the Tucan platform as well as from BHP Billington 240 million. Critical points are the gathering site. Um, the site receives gas from BP and BG facilities for transmission to Atlantic LNG. This is for the SIP site, which is for the 56-inch pipeline, which basically is a separate system. So on this system, on a daily basis, we expect to get 840 million cubic feet of gas from BP and 230 million cubic feet gas from BG. BHP condensate facility, the main purpose of the facility is for any liquid removed in the beach field area from the many facilities. We have three liquid removal facilities there. Any gas, any liquid removed from that facility is basically transported and stored at the condensate facility in Beachfield. The land pipeline network distribution. We have basically when the gas leaves Abyssinia on the 48th, it goes to, this shows the four main pi transmission pipelines that we have running through the country. Um, we will see a further graphic where the, the road that the pipeline, that the different pipeline takes to reach the Phoenix Park, as well as the road that the 56 inch pipeline will take to reach the Atlantic LNG. It should be noted that on the 56 inch pipeline going to Atlantic LNG, we have a 24 inch tap off that supplies the Union Industrial Estate and the main supply, the main consumer down there is the new power plant, which is the Trinidad Generation United Power Plant. Um, this slide shows the, the, the um, lay down of how the pipelines are run from Abyssinia in the bottom right hand corner to Phoenix Park in the mid, in the top mid area of the screen, um, as well as how the 56 inch runs from Abyssinia all the way to the left hand side of the screen at Atlantic LNG. Valve stations, the primary function of valve stations are located along the pipeline is for pressure monitoring, ESD, and even commenting collection in certain areas. We do pressure monitoring to make sure that we um, ensure that the pressures coming up to the estate are what is required. The ESD basically is for segmental ESD in terms of if we have a line break somewhere in between, we can isolate both upstream and downstream the pipeline to prevent any incident from being catastrophic. Also, due to the pipeline being transported underground buried, we will have undulating pipeline, meaning the pipeline would be buried at different they would, would run according to how the land is run, so we would tend to get liquid building up in certain areas of the pipeline. In those areas, we generally have 
plant station that we that would allow us to pull liquid from the pipe directly from the pipeline. They are called drip stations. Critical valve stations on NGC system are the Picton valve station in Debe, the Phoenix Park valve station in Point Lisas, and now the Union valve station in Labre, the, in the on the Union Industrial Estate. Um, as you can see, the Phoenix Park valve station is presently undergoing an upgrade that should be completed by the end of the year. The present capacity is 1.4 billion. The upgrade will increase it to two, and then there will be a further upgrade to, that would be able to carry to a uh, capacity of 4 billion standard cubic feet per day. Um, this is just a snapshot of the Point Lisa's industrial estate and the, and the various companies that we would supply gas to, as well as the Phoenix Park Gas Processors Limited. This is a company owned by NGC. Their purpose for our gas is that when the gas comes up, the gas is dry, but the gas still has a lot of the heavier carbon elements, hydrocarbon elements in it. Phoenix Park, all the gases pass through Phoenix Park gas processors for them to remove for them to remove the heavier hydrocarbons and they sell us back gas that we would consider dry gas with only the methane and the ethane gas hydrocarbons in it and this is where we would transport now towards all the various consumers that we have on the line. Um, if you could look at the diagram carefully you would see that the arrangement of the the pipeline in here is generally in a ring formation. This is to allow equal pressures along the entire estate, as opposed to if we had it in a straight line where we would have different consumers taking gas off the line and no, so the consumers on, on both ends would suffer. So the, the ones for this from the main, from Phoenix Park would suffer the most in terms of the pressures being, the pressures being dropped. Um, this is just a schematic of what you would see on the control room for one large consumer. The large consumers are all, all have metering equipment, which is the tree, the blue, the blue blocks with the large blocks of information over them. Those are for the meters to read how much gas is sold. We also have condensate storage tanks, a uh, separation tank, as well as an automated inlet valve. These all, all large consumers can be controlled and viewed remotely at NGC's control room in point research regardless of where they are located. Large consumer station. Each consumer site station is designed to give NGC the capability to monitor, monitor the volume of gas consumed, monitor gas supply and pressure, regulate gas supply, final point for liquid separation and collection. Stations are automated and connected via the SCADA. Um, SCADA, for those of you who may not know, is supervisory control and data acquisition. It is a remote system that NGC has in place throughout the island to monitor all the various large consumers. It allows us to open and close bars, view readings, and all of that via radio waves through our telecom system. The average gas consumption by a large consumer can range anywhere from 12 million to 150 million cubic feet per day. Um, or if this meters are used to measure the gas volumes, the meter sizes ranges from 16 to 6, as small as 6 inches. The average supply for a large consumer is 350 degrees PSI. This is a picture of a large consumer site from outside. Um, is not much you could see from here. The schematic is really the, the better, but the large tank vessel is the liquid separator. That is for final separation of any liquids that may build up in the pipeline after the gas is processed. They will be knocked out. They will be knocked out in this vessel and moved, and then the gas is allowed to go through the metering and then onto the consumer.
the SCADA system, like I mentioned, is how we will manage our network. The SCADA system consists of RTU and associated hardware. The RTU is what is located on each facility in a large consumer gas compound. Um, it's RTU stands for Remote Terminal Unit. And then we have the HMI, which is at the main control room in Point Lisas. It is HMI stands for Human Machine Interface as well as the communication system, which is the radio, um, the telecom and radio network that we would use to transport, to transport signals and information to the various sites and as well as information back from. Small consumers or light industrial consumers as they are considered use a very small, in the general scale of NGC business, they use very little natural gas on a daily basis from 0.5 million cubic feet to 2.5. A small consumer stations, they are not automated or with automated meaning that they are not automatic stations or connected to the SCADA network because of the, the little gas that we would generally sell is not, they are not really at any major danger for, for shutdown or or anything like that, we could use small equipment to basically manage the gas there. PD meters are used to measure the gas at these facilities. PD stands for positive displacement. The line size um, average for a small consumer is two inches. The average line pressure is 175 and less PSI. We go all the way down to supplying some large consumers with 15 PSI of gas, depending on what they want it for. This is a picture of a, a small light industrial consumer. This is the PD, positive displacement meter. As you can see, what happens is that natural gas comes in. There are two veins in the PD that would, that would roll, and as it rolls, it would make a counter. You would see on the top screen here, there's a microcorrector that is responsible for recording how, how, much, the, the, um, how much the vein stain is a known volume inside the PD meter, so we are able to measure it from that known volume, the known size, and how much vein turns, we can tell how much gas, how much gas was used. And the structure of the GTD division in NGC, it's contained of pipeline maintenance. The pipeline maintenance is pipeline integrity as well as pipeline services. They are responsible for ensuring the ensuring the durability and maintenance of the pipeline itself, making sure that the pipeline is not corroded, as well as making sure that liquids and liquids and any other harmful, harmful deleterious like stuff that we would have building up in the pipelines is cleaned and, and, that and whatnot. The pipeline operations division is the automation and measurement, the beach field operations and the network and gas balancing. Automation and measurement department is responsible for utilizing electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic power for the accurate measurement of data and monitoring and control of field equipment. So the automation and measurement department is basically the link between all to maintain all equipment used from the field to what the control can see, control room. Um, the network and gas balancing division consists of the control room. They are responsible for analyzing and ensuring balanced distribution of gas being supplied throughout the network, as well as the, have the, the um, section in network and gas balancing that is responsible for reading the monthly gas flows and, and tabulating NGC gas bills. Their work is done through the main control through the main control room and the SCADA system, which is maintained by the Automation and Measurements Department. Um, the Beach Field Operations Division, they are located at Guaya, where we have our oil pipelines coming from offshore coming into land. We also have the Cuba State, where we have the Pipeline coming from the BH3 Billington facility onto the, onto the mainland in Tobago. As well as we have the Union Industrial Estate Operations, 
where we have the 24-inch tap-off line from the 56-inch go into go into point 14. Um, they are responsible for maintaining the equipment located at these various facilities and ensuring that these facilities, because they are critical facilities, that they don't shut down for any particular reason. 